you're drinking sangria. Nachos, lemon heads, my dad's boat. You won't go down cause my dick can float. We sail around the world and go port to port. Every time I come, I produce a quart. Put on your life vest, let's drop anchor. There's a nice lady who I like to swank her. You're tuned to the OG Minifan Show, the Old Guy Minifan Show. It's an honor to be joined with Steve from Providence, the legend. And up in Maine, T.J. Hubbard went to Friendly's last night for dinner. So we're, we've got to talk a little bit about that. Oh, but, uh, great, great time. As Kirk says, you guys bring the fun. So let's, let's, let's bring the fun a little bit and talk about a popular subject. One, I want to say, and it hasn't got, I don't think it can get said enough. Uh, I'm glad to see that Kirk's doing well. Uh, seems like he's uh, dealing with his mental health issues. He seems uh, he seems like he's trying to keep busy, which I think is very, very important. Having uh, gone through some bouts of depression, I know that I'm happier when I'm busy too. So it's nice to see that Mr. Minahan seems to be doing a little bit better. Uh, let's talk a little bit of how I got to know you guys. I got to know Steve back when I used to do a radio show called All Politics is Local on WCRN. And Steve wants put out on Twitter that he was going to do a rally out in front of the old WEI studios. Yep. And, and I, I kind of direct messages and I think he thought I was pulling his leg. I'm like, Hey, I'll, I'll join you. Uh, <laughs> and then when he kind of realized that I was serious, uh, we got to talking and Steve called into the radio show a couple of times and we'll talk a little bit about, you know, Kirk and uh, Jerry's past and how I know Bob Merchantson and everything. Uh, but TJ was a big, big help when we did the vigil. Uh, you know, the first two people to reach out to me when we did the Bob Murchison prayer vigil in Sherborne were Steve and uh, TJ. And uh, TJ couldn't help us. I remember getting a direct message from TJ early in the morning on the night of the day of the vigil. And TJ's like, I'm already here. I'm like, it's eight o'clock in the morning. And you live in Maine. What do you mean you're already here? Got to so, beat the traffic, John. Gotta yeah, you got to beat, beat the traffic. So, uh, so good times. Hey, thanks for having me on the show. But Steve, let's talk a little bit about, you know, how I got to know you and more importantly, how you got to know Kirk. And I think you're one, you know, your story with uh, Kirk and your conversation with him when he was doing uh, Enough About Me podcast and your sure. motivation. So let's talk a little bit about that. The fans might find that to be a fascinating story. Well, I don't know how fascinating, but uh, he was always a big part of my day. My job is very repetitive. Just drive back and forth, fill up gas stations. Um, and I w used to love when six o'clock in the morning would come around, start work at 2 a.m. and just, uh, just make my way to 6 a.m. And then the rest of the day would fly by. Um, and then when all that stuff had happened with your, your buddy, Bob, um, mm. I mean, it, it was just, it was a, it was a train wreck. And I, I was kind of, I, I can't imagine what he went through, but as far as for myself, it kind of just threw everything off kilter and I, and he started doing his uh his own podcast enough about me which he had started a few years before that and i didn't like it i didn't like it because i felt that uh he was being underused uh i didn't think he could display his full talents um and i i voiced my opinion about it and i i got destroyed totally destroyed during that podcast i mean he made me look like an asshole but lo and behold the next day he left intercom so it, it worked out i took a beating a very bad beating first beating since i stole my father's truck and he was home he got home before i did and noticed that it was missing but it was worth it at the end of the day we all can enjoy him pretty much every day at um and it worked out very well for do you think do I you think. think we'll ever go to hear that podcast i hope not it was very bad uh like i said i came out on fire five minutes in i ran out of things to say melted like just, cheese oh it was bad oh so uh, you're like a fondue fountain <laughs> so bad. jesus well, I hope we actually do get to hear it because maybe then we'll get to hear the one that I did with Kirk. And I never got to really tell the story because, uh, you know, I don't want to sound like a name dropper here. But when I was at the White House this past year for the Red Sox celebration for the White House, and I walk out of the now press office that you see every day on the news because of the coronavirus, uh, I walk out and the first person I see walking down the driveway is Joe Zarbano. 
Oh, wow. All right. And if Easy. you could visualize it, you'll have to make a GIF of it, uh, TJ. Uh, sure. Joe's uh, jaw hitting the ground when he saw me walk out of the White House press office. And he's like, what are you doing here? And I said, more importantly, what are you doing here? And we talked about the infamous podcast that I did with Kirk that, uh, you know, my words that were scrubbed. Joe says that Kirk scrubbed it. And I remember sitting with him, standing right there in front of the office going, well, somebody's lying to me. And I know it's not Kirk Mm. Minahan. Yeah. And Joe just kind of walked away after that. So, uh, so hopefully both of those podcasts will get released. So, cause I think it would be good content for people. I think only one of us wants the, the first one. <laughs> I'll be honest. But you know, it was very, very odd. And then, you know, the next person I run into is Rob Bradford. And uh, you know, I tell him and Bradford's like, yeah, go get it. Go get Murchison, go get him. I'm like, yeah, but what are you guys going to do? Well, you know, you go get him, and you go, you get him, you get him, Cause you know, he's been a terror for the station. So I just yep. think it's, it's all very, very odd, but in a, in a good way, I think it's worked out better. Don't you guys yeah. agree? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, let me ask you a question. I had always you hear stories about people, um, as far as the business that you were in, as far as being, you know, snakes and, and they were rat and they'll do anything to get ahead of you in life. Do you do you kind of feel that in that conversation with Bradford, he knew how it was gonna, the outcome was gonna be, and maybe he just wanted to see you go down like like his friend had. You know, I heard Kirk mention it, you know, I think Bradford's a good guy. I mean, I've only run into him a couple times in my life and, you know, he's always been pleasant with me and there's some tension between Kirk and I hope that they can, you know, get past that, you know, time heals all. Uh, But I agree with Kirk's analysis. Rob just doesn't come across as a fighter. You know, that's that's my same relationship with Jerry. You know, a couple conversations with Jerry. When Murchison attacked them at the golf tournament, uh, I think that was the final straw that, Jerry finally wanted to fight back a little bit. And we, we kind of corresponded through email, but that was already the beginning of the end for Jerry at EEI. So, uh, you know, people cannot understand. Murchison truly has the time and the resources to ruin people's lives. Well, I mean, what kind of time does he have? He, what, he, he runs for the Board of Health in 2016 and then starts – um, his lawsuit with his neighbor with his three acres of the same, like same year, right after that. And all the while doing that, making phone calls to all these sponsors to try to get Kirk and Jerry off the radio. I mean, is that, that seems like a lot of time on his hands, but you know, I think, he's, I think to... he's, he's made enough money where he doesn't really probably need to work. He's got a staff. Uh, I remember when I was into EEI and uh... what a fucking shit bag, excuse my language, but what a shit bag, like worry about other shit. I think you're being too kind when you describe yeah, it. Right. I, 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 I mean, this man will make it his, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm, you know, I'm just a small town politician trying to help people in the world. Sure. And, you know, I'm a nobody, so he can't really influence me. And I think that's why I've been kind of like been able to do what we've been able to do because, you know, I'm just a normal average guy, you know, go to, go to work every day. And, you know, at the end of the day, I go and try to help people at night, you know, as a local politician. Uh, and, you know, to see the fear, you know, in the con- when, when I talk to, you know, David Field from Intercom and they're just fearful. I mean, you look, you look at our awful. vigil, you awful. guys, for you one, guys, for one you guy. Know, you know for I mean? one, for guy, one guy, one guy who means nothing, erroneously claimed like the negative impact of a property, you know, th- has three acres. And he has 13, you know, I don't know. That just seems like WI just laid down. Oh, big time. Being, I mean, not even, they didn't even give a fight. Look like no, Kevin no, Nash no. when Hulk Hogan just went ting, boom, he went down and covered him. No fight at all. You know, I get a call from the Ashland police chief and he's like, who's Bob Merchantson? I'm like, uh, he's the guy who was going after Mark Orham, which is how I know Murchison, you know, because he was going after the health agent in Ashland. He goes, the guy hates you. And I said, yeah, I think he does. And he's like, but why? You're, you're not a hateable guy. What have you ever done to this guy? And I said, I think I'm the only person who's ever told him the word no in his life. Yep. And so uh, Intercom would have told him to go, you know, do something physically impossible to himself, you know. The world would be different right now. Now you um you had a show for you've been involved with 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 a show business for over thirty years, correct? Now- well, I started I started you know I've always been mostly behind the scenes. I actually started in radio uh, thirty years ago. I was a intern and then became a producer for Bob Trumpy of all people, 
okay. in Cincinnati. In Cincinnati, yeah. So. Now, now before you, uh, before All Politics Local went off, um, how long were you doing that show before you had Kirk and Jerry on? And then in turn, how long before your uh, or your advertisers got called? Because it seemed like it was a very quick process, to be honest with you. Um, that that all went downhill from the time that you started talking about it uh, to the to the time frame where you were no longer doing that. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about that, because that was of July of it must have been July of 18. Uh, I reached out to then Chris Curtis mm -hmm. because I got a phone call hammered from Sorry. the governor's office, governor of Massachusetts office going, do you know Bob Murchison? <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, why? What? Because I have a couple government uh, governor appointments. You know, I have a couple. Uh, I work for MAPC, and I'm also in charge of uh, the Ashland Housing Authority in town. And then those are appointments by Governor Baker. And Murchison found out that I hold those positions, so of course, you know, he takes it upon himself to contact the governor and tell him that I'm a bad guy. Which just Google me and Charlie Baker. Uh, Charlie Baker, you know. And I have known each other for a long time and you know, mm -hmm. there's no, there's no issues there. Yep. Uh, so that was it. That was the final straw. You can call the local police chief. You can call my work. You can call this, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, I treat everybody with respect. I'm always kind to people. I always try to help people. Most people know what the score is, but when you go that far and try to ruin me, that was it. So I reached out to uh, Chris Curtis and said, Hey, listen, I got to get a hold of Kirk. I want to use some audio that they had used on uh, Kirk and Callahan. And was that all right? And five minutes later, I get a text from Kirk. Go for it. Get, go get them. So that was in July of uh, 2018. No, two, excuse me, two, 2017. Uh, go get them. No, excuse me, it was 18. It was definitely 18. Excuse me. And we just started talking about it. And uh, my co-host and I at the time, John Kerwin, we started talking about it. We did a one segment early in the morning about it, and we talked about it. And that's when I got to know MHB. MHB had reached out to me and said, hey, listen, you know, yeah. I want to start doing some work on it. Can, would you work with me? I, uh, you know, and the one thing I, I think it's, it's I have to, I am Kirk's biggest supporter because mm -hmm. Kirk, Kirk yeah. is me with talent. You know, mm -hmm. he doesn't take any bullshit. He speaks his mind. But at the end of the day, he's a super good human being. Sure. And that's the thing I like about Kirk. And when I saw that they could do it to a talent like Kirk, and, you know, I had conversations with John Dennis. John Dennis was on my show quite a bit during the election cycle. Uh, and John's like, yeah, you know, leave it alone. You know, Murchison will go away. And I'm like, John, Murchison's not going to go away. He's not that type of guy. He's not going to go away. Uh, and then when MHB reached out to me and said, hey, you want to start working on it? I was excited to work with MHB on it. MHB wrote two articles that he put up on my website for hosting purposes. He came on my show a couple times. And then, Steve, you joined us one Sunday mm -hmm. morning as well. And uh, right after your, your appearance on my show, Steve, then we started getting the calls from Murchison. And the station manager said to me, hey, listen, there's nobody I trust more than you, John. Just don't use his name. And uh, I stopped using his name. I start re started referring to him as the activist, which I didn't think was the right yeah. thing to do. But, you know, I wanted to respect what the station wanted. So I started using the term activist. And he was just hypersensitive to anything that I did. So they started calling advertisers. Station manager calls me in again and says, hey, listen, I support you. You know, just stop talking about it. Uh, yeah. And it was it was a downhill slope from there very quick. I mean, you know, a smaller was, station than EEI. I mean, yeah. true, but he, I mean, you weren't slandering the guy. I mean, you're no. just saying, hey, this this is what he's doing, and I don't think it's right. You know, uh, um, you know, I think I've always said as a parent, I appreciate that he's sensitive about his subject, but he's mad at the world but, because of his kid. And, yeah, uh, wouldn't wouldn't it have been better served for him to put his all this effort that he put in um, of everything just to you know for lesbian gay rights instead of, you know, sitting there trying to uh, ruin someone's career or ruin a bunch of people's careers, you know, well, it was better served to do something else. They and, negotiated. Uh, I know Kirk and Jerry negotiated with them and said, Hey, listen, we'll do PSAs. We'll, we'll educate people. We understand, uh, you know, we'll work with you. When 30 he years held there under the bargain, he didn't up, up on 30 years from now, he's going to be 89 on his deathbed. 
And he's going to be thinking to himself, why the fuck did I waste all that time doing stupid shit? No, you know, and, I don't, I don't think I, he's, you have well, to understand uh, the scope of it. Uh, it's it, it's fine. But the outcome is Kirk is just as popular. They may even got off the radio. More, EI, more. the sum of this, the EI is gone right in the tubes. So it's fine. I, he got rid of it, but he's Kirk is more popular now. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, I don't so see what he I don't did. See EI making only it amplified through it through this coronavirus thing. No. So, so John, what is so now since um, it see it seems like there's a common theme where uh, program managers uh, all, all had the same thing. Well, if you don't talk about him, he'll go away. And obviously, that wasn't um, what what happened. I mean, you you had a fight back against him. Um, what, what what was the, your thinking as far as uh, how you could get back at him for all that he had done to you? And then how did that transpire into an idea of a vigil? And what after the vigil? What have you noticed has changed since then? Well, first off, I never really, you know, to be, to be perfectly clear, I never really wanted to get back at him. I wanted the story to get told because that's, you know, like I said, you know, the one thing I like about Kirk is Kirk is me, but he has talent and I don't, <laughs> is that there's always three sides to every story. So there's yours, there's mine, and then there's the truth. And the way EEI was restricting the access to the story, and even within the town, even within town hall of Ashland, the town manager's like, "Don't talk about Murchison. Don't talk about Murchison." I had selectmen coming up to me, going, "You know, we know how you are, John, but don't talk about it. Don't talk." And I'm like, "That's not the way you address a problem. If you know, your mother always told you, if you ignore a problem, it's not going to go away. You need to address the problem." I had a very small f- platform, but it was a platform that I was willing to use. Uh, you know, and ultimately I lost my job for it, which is fine. Uh, but the truth needed to be told. And, uh, you know, I knew Zarbano wasn't going to t- tell it. I know David Field wasn't going to tell it based on my conversations yeah. with him. So we just talked about it. So uh, were, you, were you at the... It, was, uh, it wasn't about vengeance. Uh, I, actually, I actually feel sorry for Bob. I could not imagine going through life being that miserable of a prick, you know? <laughs> You know, yep. it's, I think it's better to help oh, people than it is to, to destroy so, people. Were you at the latest um, court hearing where they ruled in favor um, of the zoning? At the at, I wasn't at the hearing, but I was the guy who posted the uh, video on video. So. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, that's so, good. That, so now, that, how, that, that that would have lasting effects on everybody and all the builders down there. So, so how, <laughs> how has your life changed? Because it, it, it's apparent that he had went after you for a good period of time. Um, and recently has, has that kind of died out a little bit? Has it picked back up? Have you heard nothing whatsoever? Well, uh, I agreed to stop doing my radio program. Uh, certainly I certainly wasn't fired. I was, I wasn't let go. It was a mutual agreement out of respect to the station manager. His name is Chris Thompson. I had the respect for him and said, Hey, listen, you don't need this in your life. Uh, let me just step away for a while. Uh, so, but then I also did a regional uh, Metro West and Worcester area in Massachusetts TV show, All Politics is Local as well. So when Murchison got me off the radio, he started going after me on TV. Uh, once again, I said to the station manager, hey, let's let this die down. Let's let this, uh, you know, calm down. Uh, I'm going to be picking that back up again. Coronavirus has kind of uh, thrown a monkey wrench into that. But we're going to be yep. doing that a little bit. But since the vigil, and you've got to keep in mind, uh, you know, I've been a selectman and an elected official in the Metro West area for a long time. And I know a lot of police chiefs and a lot of, you know, public officials in the area. People tell me that Murchison's wife said, it's enough. They Look what they did. They came to our hometown and they embarrassed your family. They embarrassed you. Uh, it's enough. Stop. Yeah. Now, do I believe that he's Gone? No, I don't believe he's gone. I, I believe do you, he's gone. Do you he's think gone. this um the appeals court um thing that he had with the with neighboring property here? Do you think that ate up I would say, do you think it ate up a lot of the time? But you know, back again from sixteen to eighteen, he did multiple things and still trying to ruin careers at the same time. So maybe it didn't. But. You gotta understand, he he has wealth that most people can't understand. So the appeals process, he just pays an attorney to do that. I don't know if you guys remember right after the vigil. He had a, uh, he's a builder. So he had a permit yeah. hearing in Sherborne. And I purposely went to the Sherborne town hall and waited for him to come. 
he didn't come. His attorney came. So what? his att- his attorneys do all of his bidding for him. And so was that for uh, permitting of that uh, ADU? No, it's another development that he's working on. Oh, oh yeah, he's working on. So you um, are uh, you, you know, are the- a sneaky, vengeful motherfucker when you want to be, huh? <laughs> no 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 yes 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 no you just I, you, you got to know the rules of the game and you play within the rules of the game that's all right you, just play, you play within Someone's, the rules of the game and if someone sets those rules you can abide by them just as fine yeah there you go there you go uh but it's you know let me get back to it you know it's not vengeance i don't want to i don't want anything from bob murchison but can you just imagine how miserable of a person that he is and i got to tell you there were days that you know I understand the depression. There were days that I was just like, well, you know, how did I get involved in this? Because, you know, I was yes, an innocent yeah, victim on it. Yeah. Uh, sure. Because he came after the health agent in, in Ashland and I just stood up to him. Uh, and then it was, you know, one day out of the blue, I get a, a phone call from Kirk and he's like, I Googled your name and who's this Judy Margulies uh, lady? And uh, the Margulies piece is, it, it will show you the pure evil of Merchantson. Judy Margulies yeah. moved to Ashland. The rumor is, I've never been able to prove it, uh, but strong evidence to support it, is that Murchison paid her rent uh, for a whole year in advance. She moved to Ashland. Some people say her name isn't really Judy Margulies. And she came to town, and to her credit, she worked hard and got out and was active in the community, and she got elected to the Board of Health. The day she got elected, she went after Mark Orham, with a vengeance, but she never did it off the top of her head. She always had a written script. Then I find out from a person in the Sherborne Police Department that Murchison and Margulies would meet regularly at a coffee shop in Sherborne. So it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that Margulies was working for Murchison. Now, can you imagine the scope of evil? You're mad at Mark Orham because he denied you some sewer permits in Sherborne where he worked as a part-time inspector that he would actually go out and recruit somebody and rumor has it pay the rent and, and, and get her elected to a board of health just to get back at Mark Orham. That's pure evil. <laughs> that might even be worse than what he did to EEI in scopes of evilness. You know, I'm not, well, I, I, go ahead, Steve. Well, I, I got to tell you, so I, I'm, I'm very impressed. I, I mean, I don't know what kind of dick you're swinging, but it seems like you got a monster because hammer time. You're you, you, you're you're involved in all this. Now you still have to keep up with your current ob- obligations. But then more recently, I see a picture of you out in front of the Boston Globe playing uh, the rape song. Rape. And I'm That's like, a great this, song. This it's guy, a great song. This, it's a great this, tune. This this, great this tune. guy is, is is doing this on his own. No one no one was there with you by yourself. Can you get Justin like, to play that at some point? So, so now, what is it that? You're, you're mainly focusing on now. You do you because it seems like right now you're Shirley Lee Young. Is All right. Next. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what uh, is it that you want to see that you disagree with her about? Is it all strictly in relation to Kirk, or is it some stuff otherwise? Uh, we talked about her on All Politics Is Local when I was on the radio. Uh, I invited her on my show a hundred times. I've got the emails to back it up. I actually invited her to the vigil as well to come to the vigil. Mm. I I can put up with a lot of stuff, you know, being a Republican in Massachusetts, I can put up with a lot of stuff. I can I can work with anybody. Uh, I will work with anybody. But the one thing I can't handle is hypocrisy. And there isn't a bigger hypocrite in the Boston media than Shirley Young. And reached out to her, you know, about what she was doing, her articles about Kirk and Jerry and even Christian Fourier on WEEI. And yep. invited her on when given the opportunity to come on and knowing that she's going to get a tough question, not like Jim and Marjorie, you know, you know, patting her on yep. the, you know, patting her on the head and saying, Oh, you're doing a good job. Keep it up. She knew she was probably going to get some tough questions. She refused to come on. I tried to say that I would record an interview when, at her convenience. She could come on live. We could do it. I even offered to send her the questions up front. She, you know, she didn't want to do it. Her past and, but, articles are hard to differentiate between like the Boston Globe and the Onion, it, it's, you know, there's a big gray area there. You know, some of it's it's comical. It really is. It's it's you know, if you're a lover of journalism, it's it's actually kind of scary that she actually works for you know a newspaper known as the Boston Globe. Uh, but like I said, we invited her to the vigil. I actually thought 
that because we invite her to the vigil, she would write something anti about the vigil. She's afraid yep. of it. She's afraid of it. Uh, you guys probably saw that uh, when she went to Winchester High School and lied about Kirk and lied yep. about journalism, I said, okay, this is ridiculous. And I went to the Winchester uh, School Committee meeting afterwards. And they were kind of taken back that I was there uh, and said that, hey, you know, thank you for coming. Uh, we can't comment on it. And then two hours after I leave, they they do comment on it, right. uh, protecting her. Uh, and then I find out, you know, that, that they did protect her. So now she's my new target. So I've, I've been to the Globe four times, three times uh, security's asked me to leave uh, you know, yep. respectfully and play. They certainly didn't like being rape being played out in front of the Globe. But oh, uh, of course not. But, you know, when the coronavirus is done, uh, you know, Shirley's back on Twitter now. I don't know if you I've seen that today. Seen yeah, that she today. came back last night, uh, you know, and Shirley, if you're watching, this is not over. I'm, you're going to be held accountable for what you've done. So, <laughs> Well, wow. let me ask you this real quick, uh, TJ, before you. So um, what is it that you're ultimately looking at? Is it that you just want an interview with her? Or is it that you want the Boston Globe to hold her and all of her constituents accountable for the lack of um, uh, truth that they tell inside their articles? Don't forget, they're uh, woke. The, they're woke. So I mean, what is it that you would ultimately like to come out of? Because there's going to be some sort of end game in anything that anyone does. Well, I think that's a good point, Steve. And like I said, once again, just to get the truth out, you know, I just let people know there's, you know, there's a different side of the story. Why is Shirley afraid to sit down with Kirk and have a conversation? Because she's yeah. wrong. Well, of course she's wrong. That's it. That's it. That's the only. That's the only but, explanation. But she she's radically wrong. But we can raise money to help the transgender community. We can raise yeah. money to help kids with cancer. Can I do mean, all that. This wo this woman purposely. And she, she's a mother. Like you know, she posts pictures of her children on uh, social media. This woman purposely worked against the Jimmy Fund, which raises money to help kids and families with cancer. Can you it, be any lower than yeah, that? I mean, it, it, what's the co cost of looking like an idiot? And she thinks it's infinite because she's going to look like a moron if she sits down with Kirk. And I, I'm venturing that's the guess. So, But how does John Henry own the Red Sox and the Globe? Ooh. And also be a strong supporter of the Jimmy Fund and have her as an employee. Well, what is it now? We have, uh, I hear the other day that John Henry is not going to pay his vendors during this whole Corona outbreak. What kind of shitbag move is that? You know, that, well, I mean, do you expect it from them? I guess so. Unfortunately, you've become to expect that, you know, John Henry it, is just, he is an ultimate fraud. He's never cared about the fans. He's never, only cared about never. his pocketbook since he's come to town. I can and, I can tell you, we had a little small victory with the Globe last night. Oh, uh, the tell. Globe the Globe did publish a um, Corona uh, virus audio on um, SoundCloud that I heard this morning, where they took uh, the story of one Abraham Hands and um, ran with it. So it was that was pretty good. I hope uh, we get that circled out here so everybody can hear it. Because that's pretty oh, you, good. You definitely have to blast that out. You definitely have to blast that out. Sure. And so uh, now, um, now we have to talk about real quick, TJ, because I think it's hilarious. You actually have Globe staff responding to a fake Twitter account. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Talk about it. It says, it says liar lung. You know, liar lung. I mean, and, it's, and it's, it's not even Shirley's name. So, I mean, um, and I'm, I'm, you know, if you say that you're a fake parody account, you can stick around. But... When you uh, say that you're act the actual person, they uh, uh, act Twitter will cut you right in half. You're gone. And that happened to me. At one point, but I does had, that show I, you the quality of work coming out of the Boston Globe that you yeah, have? Globe they just, employees they, referring they just, to a they, wrong Twitter account. John, they they just don't care. Um, no, the, the day and age, they just don't care. Whatever, um, whatever uh, they publish, they want it to be you know oh the wokeness of it or uh oh look at us uh, I, I did a house this morning um oh yesterday that had the signs in the front yard you know doesn't matter where you're from we're glad you're our neighbor you've seen those signs of multicolored oh, yeah you know so we had that one and then a bunch of other ones um but i went to i went to knock on the door to you know hey it's my inspection i'm sorry we changed it to an exterior click door slammed 
Wow. So, so we're glad you're a neighbor. Just don't have the coronavirus. But like I'm saying, uh, um, you know, the globe, that's the way, you know, the left works. So um, the globe is our enemy and people need to understand that the globe is our enemy. If you're a right. fan of you're, you're a fan of Kirk, the globe is our enemy. Yep. You know? And the person so, who owns and, the globe it, owns one of the major sports markets in Boston. And, and he's going to bleed out this year. He, I, I, I have been praying that this was going to be the year that he finally sells the team. But, you know, Sam Kennedy needs to be held accountable. John Henry oh. needs to be held accountable. Shirley Young needs to be held accountable. Steve, how many uh, Red Sox games do you think you'll watch this year? If they start, let's say, oh, well, oh, let's say June 1st. Well, last year was the first time that I didn't attend or watch one, one of the games. And, I mean, I was – I, I used to watch as many as possible. They, uh, I week. mean, the viewership was down last year. I bet you it's cut in half this year. Um, yeah. And not to get into the sports talk stuff, but like, you know, you ship off Moogie Bats, Chris Hale's arms, Jello, um, all that stuff. You know, they're going to have guys from the Sea Dogs up there. They're going to be batting 210, hit two home runs all year. Oh, that's a good guy. It just, it's not going to be a good product to watch, and they're just going to bleed out. So you know, if I, you want to go, go, it's going to be like five bucks, five bucks a game. I would go to 10 games a year. I got two boys and, you know, that are in college now, but grew up, you know, they all had Red Sox jerseys and paraphernalia and posters in the room. Sure. And I just think about all that money I've wasted on the Red Sox because I won't spend a dime on the Red Sox as long as John Henry owns them. Now, let me ask you something, John. So you are without a doubt, the most active minute fan as far as helping out the show and Kirk, uh, through you know like the things that you do low-key stuff like nobody knew you were going out to the boston globe and going to do that um you you helped out tremendously with the vigil i think it was your idea if i'm not mistaken um do you you were the motivator show? but it but i'm the one who went and got all the permits and everything yep yep now do you um do you do you listen to his show daily do you do you try and listen to all of them absolutely i i you know, I work in finance, so I, you know, I work in a quiet office. So I, I, I look forward to 11 o'clock every day, every day. Because, because you are, well, a lot of the word clout has been pushed around a lot lately. Uh, you are probably the most active minute fan that without a doubt doesn't look for any clout whatsoever. You have no. things that you want to do in your own mind and you don't look for a pat on the back for it. Um, if, if there's a lot of newer listeners that are around now that, that have no idea about things that you've done in the past. Um, so I, I would like personally, I mean, it, I don't know what your schedule is. I think that we should do this more often I because agree. TJ and I, TJ and I are two shitheads and he can sit there and say he's computer savvy. He's just as big of an asshole as I am. And someone like True. yourself that <laughs> has so much experience, I think this would be not only beneficial to us, which I mean, I, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't looking for someone to help us out, but um, as far as I think that the younger listeners could learn a lot from your experiences. Um, and I, and I also think that people like myself that have been listening for 10 plus years, it, it's kind of motiv- motivational when you see how much that you do, uh, to actually help out with things. Well, I'm, I'm always happy to help, uh, you know, to sit there and say that, you know, that, uh, I have clout. I, I'm, I'm just a meta fan. Uh, uh, it's not like you're tweeting gifts at Big Cat, you know. <laughs> All right, we got to talk a little. We have a couple things we we have to talk about before we go. We do have to talk sure. about that, and we have to talk about uh, Mike uh, tasting his own. Uh... Oh God, <laughs> it's cum. Let's hear you it. Can John, say John, it. John, John, it. No, John, no, John, John, now, I who? You know, imagine, like I said, I sit in my office every day and listen. You know, look, look forward to the Kirk Minahan show. Uh, when that came across the other day, I'm like, what? Uh, Steve's response to that was the, was the perfect drop of all time. What are we talking about here? What are we talking about here? <laughs> oh, uh, Steve, don't no, know. Steve can't act all high and mighty. I'm pretty sure out of all the guys. No, no, Steve would be last, I guess. But still, he tried it. There's no doubt in my mind. <laughs> what? So you're saying that uh, Steve has tried his own? Yeah, he's probably shot it on his own eyebrow. <laughs> okay. Boom. All right. Is it, that's the no, type I, of content I, you're looking would, for, right, Steve? <laughs> I think that I think that that's uh, yeah. I, that I'm glad that you brought that up because I have never 
Wait, yeah, wait, 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 wait a second. We can't do this without saying, have we? All three of us. Yeah, yeah. I, I have I've not. Never drunk. I have not. I have. I have. Not. I have. You have. No, John, how old yeah, do you? John, how old, how old are you, John? 57. 57. So you're you're still a young buck. You weren't around back in the day when you and your wife had to sleep in two separate beds or anything like that. So you're, you're telling me that back a young 14-year-old John Featherston in his parents' bathroom looking at, I don't know, so Playboy, what that would have been during the first episode. I was more episode. of a hustler guy than a Playboy guy. Yeah, hustler is way better than Playboy. Yeah. Hands ne- down. Never, Never gave it a taste, John. Never, never, never decided I, to just no, give it a little tip of the tongue. Skipped right over the yeah. penthouse, went straight to the hustler. All right, fair enough. I, I, I believe you. I believe you. All right, you. fair enough. So now, what, what else did you want to bring up, John? As far as uh, what was the the other subject you wanted to talk about before we get out of here? Uh, we just get out of here. We don't need to talk about it. <laughs> okay, let's just we can, get, <laughs> we can go ahead and get out. Man. We can go ahead and get out. But uh, no, I'm looking I, forward to coming back. No, no, no. We, yes. no I'm, we're gonna. You wanted to uh, show me about clout chasing off after big cat. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about that because, like yeah, I said, hit on it real quick. Let's you, go. You, 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 you were a big it. fan of Kirk and Callahan. I am. Uh, I thought it was good yesterday that Kirk said that you know, hey, when Kirk was I'm laughing up there, I I can I can honestly say this. I listen to Mud and Callahan. Sure. I've all, I, I, you know, I was a big fan of John and Jerry. Uh, How are we going to know it's bad Kirk, unless you listen to it? Right. And I wanted to, <laughs> I listened every day going, oh, is Kirk back? Oh, nope, he's not back Yeah, today. exactly. And, That's the- and then I'll, I'll listen tomorrow and is Kirk back? And no, he's not back. And nobody was more frustrated than I when I would hear Jerry say, oh, you know, we hope he's back soon. Oh, come on. Cut the shit. When's he coming back? Or yeah, why is things you do. With it, right. Like, right. Uh, like, I didn't know. So I'm sitting there going, oh, maybe he'll be back today. Or maybe he'll be back today, you know? And, you know, interact with the show and do whatever. But as soon as we knew that Kirk wasn't coming back, go look at their ratings. Right, right. On right. the toilet. And so. uh, I did I did not listen to uh, the day they got rid of Jerry. I have not listened to EEI since. Okay. Are you a Cala fan? Do you listen to Jerry's podcast every day? Uh, not every day, but I do listen, yes. Okay, yep. fair enough. Because right. Jerry, Jerry talks about politics and, uh, you know uh, – you know, Jerry and I are, you know, have similar interests. Uh, sure. Like I said, I'm in the even, office. E- even though, even though you saw those pictures of Tulsi Gabbard I sent you this week, you still have the same interest. I mean, oh, uh, I, I, I'm not going to deny. I'm a Tulsi fan. Try to Tulsi went off your lip after looking at those. Jesus Christ! Oh, we, we you have to throw those up. Uh, we we can talk about uh, d- the down. Dale Arnold stuff <laughs> that you were posting. Oh my God! Oh. <laughs> Well, you know, hey, hey Dale Arnold on tasted his own. I think that's yeah. the question we have to ask. Oh, Is Dale funny. Arnold tasted his own? Which, which hockey player hasn't he tasted? That's <laughs> it. We're going back Jefflin's arrow, you know. Don Sweeney, go ahead. Lay one All right, right you're, off his ig- you're ignoring the topic. What's your fascination with Big Cat? Because I, um, I, I didn't know I, a lot about Big Cat until Kirk. Uh, went I know, to he kept going work. on Kirk's, Kirk's show and he kept going on. He, he seems like a riot. Seems like a good guy, you know, to get to know and hang out. Um, seems funny. He's always got the time for Kirk. So got the time for him. You know, he's a big fan of Kirk's. So, yeah. um, I think, uh, and he seems yeah. like a great guy too. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Seems like a nice guy. Uh, and it's not just, it's not, um, I'm not sending him heart emojis. I'm putting his face on things that, uh, you know, subject. They're not, they're, you know, when I, when I make him do things, uh, it's not just for, uh, see John, oh, hey, John, you can see this, John, you see how people fold under pressure. Mm-hmm. You see what's happening. I'm not, right I'm not now. folding this it. Is, I'm, I'm just, I'm just giving him enough. Right? Ro- I'm just giving him enough rope. Okay, okay, not, you know? not folding. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> not Jesus folding at all. Christ. Hey, Steve, what do you so do in the mornings def- now? Uh, you're in your truck, you're out making your deliveries. Oh. What do you listen to? So right now, John, as, as we speak, this, this virus is, Gas sales, gas prices are where they were. I think the lowest they've been since 2004. Uh, Sales of gasoline are down 85 to 90% now. So now I am not working. They had me uh, exhaust some of my vacation the last week, and I'm going to be using some next week. Uh, They just laid off 21 guys at my place. Um, So now I'm lucky where I've been there for 20 years to where I I have enough union seniority to where it should not affect me. I have to switch my schedule. Um, But Honestly, as of right now, I am fucking struggling. When I get done with the show, 
Uh, I found a way to be able to broadcast the YouTube shows through my uh, speakers in the truck. But after that, I have fucking nothing, man. There is nothing. And, and the same thing is transpiring on TV. Uh, you look at all these different networks. I thought they'd be taking yeah. full advantage of this opportunity. Mm-hmm. The TV, I might as well may not even may cancel my cable. There is nothing on right now. These yeah. people, when they don't have something uh, relevant other than this disease, they have nothing else that they can draw from as far as to draw an audience. And I talked it's to my sad. wife yesterday about sad. canceling most of the services that we have just because I pay like 300 and some odd dollars a month for uh, uh, cable and our cell phones. And I th- that's just way too much, you know? <laughs> It, they're all in the same club, TJ, because it's so funny you said that, because I had the exact same conversation with my wife last night. We're, we're flipping through the channels and there was nothing on. And my wife's like, how much do we pay for this every month? Yeah. What the what the hell are we doing? So we looked at like YouTube TV, not to plug them, but they have all the same channels. My wife watches a lot of that murder porn, you know, the wives with knives and, you know, snap killer couples. I'm actually kind of frightened at night. So I was going to say, you know, yeah, yeah. So she watches all open, that, and the other stuff. Uh, that. I don't really care. I just watched the KMS channel. So well, that's the best show on best show on uh, the internet. Right, Steve? Uh, I would agree. I just think that <laughs> if, as long as as it's long now as that John's John, here, I think that as long as John has the time for us, we should, uh, he deserves a time. platform more than he, he deserves a platform more than anyone. I don't think people understand that. Yeah. He doesn't make gifts and he doesn't, he doesn't, uh, you know, do funny internet shows, and he doesn't smoke weed, and he doesn't do stuff that might appeal to the younger version. But I think that John, uh, by himself, does so much for for Kirk John, and for the for the get show. One of these flat brimmed hats. It's a fifty-seven. Yeah, you're gonna get a flat. You're gonna get a flat. I could get hat. brim. I could do that. Will not be a flat red brim hat. But no. but I think God. To, to be honest, John, I think we'd be doing a disservice to to the. To the listeners, to the fourteen people that will watch the show, if you don't come on with us every every weekend. Well, I I jumped at the opportunity to join you guys, and I've been big fans of yours for guys for a long time. And anything I can do to help, I'm I'm always willing to help. Sure. All but, right, uh, then hopefully, but hopefully we've we got do to, this again. We've got to do our efforts. Keep in mind, we got to get the Boston Globe, and we we cannot let Sam Kennedy off just because coronavirus. Sam Kennedy needs to be held. Yep. You know, we, maybe we, maybe we do something out in front of the Globe or uh, Fenway Park, uh, and we use this as a venue to promote it. But uh, if, you do something at Fen- if we do something at Fenway Park this year, who's going to see it? No one's going to be there. That's, that's the pro- thing. Yeah, that's it has a good to be point. recorded live. That's but, uh, a good point. Yeah. Hey. Well, thanks. But, you know, the, thanks for coming the, on with us and these me and him. So, hey, it's an honor to be with you guys. And uh, good luck, Steve. Uh, you know, keep plugging. Yeah, my, I'm my sure business- everything. Okay, everything. You everything will come along. Everything will come along. You, yeah, I think it's gonna bounce sneakers. back fast. I hope. I hope. You can sell Hopefully. your kids sneakers. He'll be all right. We'll be all set. I'm not too worried about it, but we'll figure it out. All right, guys. That's the OG Minifan show for the latest OGs. edition. All we'll right. Talk Thanks to you soon. Thanks for coming on, bud. Right. Have a nice day.